I have spoken for years, many years now, about the chrism or the sacred secretion or the ictos. This sacred fluid inside the human body. And I know that the ancients, the Essenes, the forefathers of Christianity, the mystics from other faiths as well, they were completely aware of this precious substance. And it reflects in our world still. Christ, if you look at the meaning of this word from Greek, it means to anoint or the anointed one or derived from to anoint. Anointing is what? It's the anointing with oil. The Bible references the oil of gladness. The Lord will bless you with the oil of gladness. The oil of gladness is the chrism. It is the sacred secretion. I don't want to go into the science of it, but it's said the secretion is born in the clostrum, travels through the 33 vertebrae, meets with a psychophysical germ at your sacral plexus, the five fused vertebrae, and then makes its return journey where it passes through the hypoglossal, the olive of the 12th cranial nerve, moves into the hypothalamus and rests in that tomb for two and a half days before it is resurrected and amplifies the power and function and vibration of the human vessel that it's resurrected within. At that point, you're at the land flowing with milk and honey DMT is an amber substance, serotonin, a milky substance. The pituitary and the pineal gland are responsible for this inside your body. This is the anointing that alters the ability of this receiver that is your human vessel to receive those higher frequencies, the frequencies of grace, the frequencies of God, the frequencies of the angelic. And over the years, many have said, you don't need this. This is, this is not right. You don't need that. And the reality is, it's true you don't need it. You don't need to know about it. But it can help if you do. But there is somebody who needs it, and that is Source, the white light of creation, the will of unconditioned love. It needs your chrism. It's why it's in you. It's part of the anatomical design of what you are. God needed you to have a heart so as it could pump blood through your body and keep you alive. God needed you to have a stomach so you could digest a, a variety of foods to survive here. But God also needed you to have this barometer, this barometer of sacredness with inside your body. For even if you are a fundamentalist and you do not in any way, shape or form look to the mystic truth of the Bible, and you stick with your perception, this is okay, this is okay. If you are there and you are moving in that still presence of God that opens and expands the heart, that leaves you in awe and wonder at the sight of leaves blowing in the wind, that fills you with compassion, that puts you in a space where the voice of God will be heard puts you in that supernatural space where you have just profound love and joy. It's, it's not with effort. It's a new vibration, a new frequency, a new chemical balance of the body. It's a vessel vibrating in a way whereby reality itself 
shifts and you move to other dimensions within the rooting of this third dimension. All of that untapped power and potential that Yeshua spoke of to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to prophesize, to speak in the language of angels. It's all born in that chrism because that chrism realigns the the vibratory state, the emotional state, the spiritual state of the vessel. Now there's still work to do. It doesn't do everything for you. You might not need to know anything about it. You can live well and this will activate in your body. This will happen in your body. The thing is, when you feel this secretion come and the stillness it gives you, the clarity of mind it gives you, the sharpness, the motivation, it eliminates procrastination. It just realigns the frequency of your body to be plugged directly into the will of soul. And flesh just takes a knee. Flesh takes a knee in the presence of the Christos, the chrism, the sacred secretion, the Christ within you. The flesh, the birthplace of all of the sin that we commit, to fall away, to miss the mark, to live unconsciously. It, and all of its energies, takes a knee in the presence of that internal Christ that is born from the claustrum, is united with a, a psychophysical germ, it's said, by the ancients. In, from the sacral plexus, which is five fused vertebrae. Yeshua was wounded five times in Galilee at the age of 33. The 33rd vertebrae in Galilee, which means the place of the skull, when your five senses are united with your soul, not controlling it and owning it. When that happens, the man becomes the Christ. The qualities of Yeshua are born in the human. Anatomically, when that shift in the chemistry of the body and the frequency of the body occurs, and God uses that as part of your anatomy and tool, and it is a biological response to behavior, and it's in us. It's in us, so the gifts of the oil of gladness are not used by the immoral, as far as I can see. And so the five senses, the five wounds of Yeshua. David takes five stones and he strikes Goliath here, in Galilee, the place of the skull. I've seen God face to face, I call that place Peniel. The secretion is the stillness's foundation in the physical anatomy. If you are living in a state of freedom and non-duality, if you are living in the bliss of the stillness of the world, if you are there, your secretion is rising. If you are living surrendered to God, and you have all hope in God. And you, you put God in the middle at the beginning, at the first of everything you do. The secretion has risen. For the human vessel who does that is anatomically aligned with source and is therefore nurturing the, the, the Christ within which has an anatomical trigger. In the Bible, there is a verse, 1 John 2.27. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teach you of all things 
and is truth and is no lie and even as it has taught you you shall abide in him let me reread a part of that the anointing which you have received of him abides in you and you have no need for any man to teach you because the anointing teaches you I have had insights into life into my psychology into the world that I never had before I was upgraded when I gave my life to God as a man I was upgraded or perhaps I was just restored to be what God wanted me to be all along before I fell but since witnessing, embracing and feeling the chrism, the sacred secretion rising in the vessel. I can say it is the greatest teacher because when you sit with it, you are sitting with Yeshua, you are sitting with God, you are sitting with the saints, with the angels. Your frequency is, is as such that they can minister to you. It might not be audible, it just may be some persons might say a download, an arising of an awareness, of a knowing, inexplicable, supernatural, unstudied, not coming from a book. And I believe that is the anointing teaching us. And it teaches all men. For without retaining the vitality of the body, the energy of the body, without spending it on frivolous pursuits at times, pouring out that vital life force from your body into the world and pleasure, by being more wise with it, more nurturing with it, more respectful for what it is, It doesn't just mean your sexual energy. It means the very vitality of your body. By nurturing it. The voice of God steps in. The presence of God takes over. And it teaches you. The same way it speaks to the wild animals that it's time to migrate. Or the newborn how to walk or how to fly the same way it speaks to your DNA and informs your body through that intelligence how to beat its heart it then begins to speak to the entire vessel lead it, guide it, walk it and move it, to do the will, the will of the one that created you, that knit you together in your mum's womb, the will of unconditional love. God bless guys. May the presence of God be your greatest teacher. Never follow another human being. Never.
Let them point you to the truth of the presence of God in your life and let the anointing be your educator. Let the presence of God, which is known when your body is surrendered to the will of unconditioned love, let it be your guide. Let it be your teacher. Let it be your guru. Because it knows what you need better than any other human being in this world if you can access it. Most of you know that thanks to the love, support and sharing of the community that has followed us here on YouTube, we have been able to build a village for special needs children in crisis out in Tanzania. Our family in Tanzania is now made up of nearly 200 children. Most of these children have disabilities and most of these children are among the most marginalized human beings in our human story. You have seen the suffering on this channel, I won't go over it, but these children had no access to housing, medical care, some were abandoned and they certainly didn't get quality care, some of them. It is only thanks to the love, support and the partnership of persons in this community that we have been able to make this family a reality, that we have been able to bring these children out of the dark and into the light where they belong. To all who have partnered with what we do, thank you for your love and support. We simply can't do what we do without you. If you are not involved in our family and you are interested in helping us to eradicate this problem that we face inside the human story, eradicate this problem that these children are facing and don't need to face, then we have launched a new partnership program. If you visit www.sharetanzania.com forward slash partnership, you will see all of the details there. Ultimately, these partnerships help us to sustain our family, to provide everything we need to these children to make sure they are happy. And in return with that, we will provide you with regular updates and a newsletter every month as well, so as you can see exactly how your act of love and sharing is impacting the world and the lives of these children in the same way that I get to see it. Okay, that was all. Thank you for the love and support, guys. God bless you.